Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice polynomial equation. We have 1 plus x squared quantity squared equals 4x multiplied by 1 minus x squared. And we're going to be solving for x values. And guess what? I'll be presenting four methods. Yes, you heard me right. So stick around and let's get this done. So first method, I'm going to go ahead and expand this. This is going to give me x to the fourth power plus 2x squared plus 1 equals 4x minus 4x cubed. Now let's go ahead and bring the x cubed over here so we can write it as x to the fourth plus 4x cubed plus 2x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. Nice. Now, we're going to put it in a nicer form by completing the square. How do we complete the square? By looking at the first two terms. Notice that these two terms are part of a perfect square and that you can find by doing the following. This would be x squared squared. This would be 2 times x squared times 2x. Nice. So this is your a, this is your b, and this is 2ab. Make sense? So all you need is b squared, which is 4x squared. But wait a minute, I don't have 4x squared. I have 2x squared. So what I need to do is subtract 2x squared to balance it out. Make sense? Okay, great. So we break down the 2x squared into 4x squared minus 2x squared. And now we can go ahead and put these three terms together because they will make a perfect square. And then we can factor these two and the rest will be uh, just easy to do. Okay, ready? Now, the first three terms can be written as x squared plus 2x quantity squared minus 2 is a common factor. You're going to get x squared plus 2x. Oh, nice. Plus 1 equals 0. Now, if you go ahead and call this t or y or whatever, coffee, whatever you like, then we get something like t squared minus 2t plus 1, 2t or not 2t if you're a tutor, you know, then this becomes t minus 1 quantity squared. That's what I mean by a perfect square. So a perfect square within a perfect square, in other words, right? So now replace t with what it is. You're going to get x squared plus 2x minus 1 quantity squared equals 0. Uh-oh, that's super nice because this is a quadratic multiplied by itself. Great. So solving it actually would be pretty easy. All you have to do is solve the inside because square will, will not matter. Zero is such a special number. Its square root is zero. Its square is zero. Just like one, but zero is better, right? Better than nothing. A lot of people call, hey, it's nothing. No, zero is actually better than much, much better than nothing. Okay, so where do we go from here? Solve the quadratic using the formula. X equals negative B plus minus the square root of b squared 4 minus 4ac, that's going to be another 4, which will give you an 8. And that is negative 2 plus minus 2 root 2 divided by 2. From here, x will be negative 1 plus minus root 2. That's it. Two solutions, even though it's quartic, there are only two solutions because it's a perfect square. Make sense? And every solution is doubled, basically. We don't have any non-real solutions. Make sense? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because we still have three more to go. Are you ready? So we're basically going to pick it up from here, maybe uh, x to the fourth plus 4x cubed because that's what I'm going to use next. x to the fourth plus 4x cubed. And I think we had 2x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. Nice. This is almost a symmetric equation or a symmetrical. I forgot what the official name was. What I mean by that is if you look at the coefficients of these two, they are the same. 2x squared is in the middle, and these two coefficients are not the same, but they're opposite. So good enough. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to divide everything by x squared. x to the fourth divided by x squared. 4x cubed divided by x squared. And the reason why we divide it by x squared is because x squared is in the middle. We need to divide by the middle term, just the x squared, not 2x squared and then plus 1 over x squared. And this is still 0. Obviously, if x does not equal 0. We know that, right? It's not going to satisfy the equation. That's clear, hopefully. Now, from here, we get something super nice. x squared plus 4x 
equals to minus 4 over x plus 1 over x squared. And we'll make it nicer by putting these two together, x squared plus 1 over x squared, and these two together. That's going to give us 4 times x minus 1 over x, and 2 will be lonely at the end. Now we can go ahead and write this as x minus 1 over x squared plus 2ab, which is 2, plus 4 times this. You see what I'm talking about? Plus 2 equals 0. And now we can go ahead and call this y, and don't ask why. We get y squared plus 4y plus 4 equals 0, which is y plus 2 quantity squared, so on and so forth. And you know what? You can take it from here. I'll leave it as, uh, as an exercise because I will have still two more methods to go. This is probably one of those rare problems where I present four methods because not all problems are going to fit this pattern. But this is a good one. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. Start with the original problem. Don't expand it. Maybe we'll expand it, but in a different way. And we know that this is equal to what? This one, right? So I'm going to go ahead and subtract something from both sides. What is that going to be? Can you guess? It's going to be 4x squared. And there's a good reason behind it. Uh, because if you take a plus b squared and subtract 4ab from it, then you will be getting a minus b squared. You got that? 2ab turns into negative 2ab. That's why I'm doing it. So now when you do this, you're going to get uh, the following. Let's just uh, follow along and then maybe you'll have a better idea what I'm talking about. And this one right here is actually going to stay like this, I think. I don't think I'm going to touch it. Now here, we're going to write this as x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1, which is a perfect square. You see that? That's nice because we're going to turn into that. Let's do it. x squared minus 1. Actually, you know what? It's probably better if I do it with the 1 minus x squared because of the presence of 1 minus x squared. You see what I'm talking about? We were about to um, do something. Okay, so here's how we're, I'm going to simplify it. 1 plus x squared, two, 1 minus 2x squared, sorry about that. 1 minus 2x squared plus x to the fourth equals this. And then this will be 1 minus x squared squared. And now here's where the hocus pocus or math magic comes in. Are you ready? Ta-da! We're going to divide both sides by something. Guess what that's going to be? Okay, we're going to divide both sides by this. And you might be like asking, why by that? Because that's going to give us a constant and other good things. You'll see. If I divide this by that, of course, I'm not including the uh, 4 there. It's just going to stay. This will become 4 and this will become this divided by that. Let's simplify this. Now from here, we're going to lose one of these. So we're going to end up with 1 minus x squared over x equals. And here x cancels out 4 minus 4 times x over 1 minus x squared. Do you see what I'm talking about? I hope you do because this gives us an interesting stuff. Like what? If you call this u, this becomes 1 over u. Okay? 1 over u. 1 over u. So you get 4 u equals 4 minus 4 over u. Multiply everything by u. u squared equals 4 u minus 4. Remember, this is the same equation we've been coming up with. And then from here, hopefully, again, you can take care of this, right? I'm going to leave it as an exercise. You've got too many exercises. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and talk about the fourth method because otherwise this video is going to take forever and people are probably going to be turned off. Now, I'm going to replace, wait a minute, what did I do? Oh, I'm going to replace x with tangent theta. You know why? Because in the original problem, I do have... 1 plus x squared. That's actually going to work real nice because 1 minus tangent squared is also not bad. So here's what we're going to get. First of all, replace x with tangent theta, 1 plus tangent squared. You're going to get that. And then you're going to square it. This is going to be 4 tangent theta times 1 minus tangent squared theta. So here's what we're going to do next. This is 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared, which is 1 over cosine squared. So this is going to become 1 over cosine to the fourth power theta. And then on the right-hand side, sine over cosine can be used to replace tangent. And 1 minus tangent squared can be written as 1 minus cosine squared over sine squared. But then make a common denominator. You're going to get... Wait a minute. Did I get that right? No. Sine squared C over... S over C. So it's going to be cosine squared minus sine squared 
divided by cosine squared. Awesome. Now, you can simplify this definitely because these two will multiply and give you cosine cubed. You don't want cosine to be zero. You can check it out. It's not going to work. And then uh, you can basically multiply both sides by cosine cubed. If you do that, a lot of things are going to cancel out. These two. And then here we're going to get 1 over cosine equals what? 4 sine theta. Uh-oh. This is cosine of 2 theta. Nice. Let's go ahead and replace that with cosine of 2 theta because remember that's the double angle formula. That's why you need to be very familiar with double angle formulas. But even better, cross multiply and you're going to get another double angle formula. 4 sine theta, cosine theta, cosine 2 theta equals 1. What is this? 2 sine theta cosine theta is sine 2 theta. So this becomes 2 sine 2 theta. Uh-oh, a double angle emerges again because this is 2 sine x cosine x or 2 sine u, whatever, something, something. 2 sine t cosine t, and that is sine 2t, and that's sine 4 theta equals 1. From here, you should get something like this. 4 theta equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. And then from here, you can get pi over 8 plus pi n over 4. And of course, there's another solution which you can find. Wait a minute. There's no other solution. That's it. These are the solutions. But of course, you can replace n with different values and that should give you the answer. Ta-da! The solutions from from alpha. Good job. Those are the ones we first found. And the graph of these two functions intersecting at two points. Sorry about the length of the video because I had to present four methods and I didn't even finish two of them. So, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.